bit about yourself. Yeah, just tell the tribe a little bit about yourself, what you went to, what brought you to this space, you know, why you're in this space, and mm -hmm. we kick it off from there, you know? Sound good to me. All right, so, you know, just to introduce myself formally, everybody, peace and light. Um, my name is Tahuti. A lot of people know me as Black and Crypto. Um, this is a journey that kind of started for me back in 2015, just with genuine interest in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. You know, what is Bitcoin? Why is it so important? Why are people talking about it? Why are people getting rich about it, yet in the same space people are skeptical about it? Um, you know, I kind of just started with genuine interest and then finding my own way, um, you know, purchasing my first Bitcoin uh, in the first time around 2016 through Paxful.com, which, believe it or not, is based in Delaware, where I'm from. And, um, you know, just having the power to have it in my hand for the first time, I was hooked. So I ran with it and then, you know, got my first wallet. Um, you know, started dabbling in Coinbase, uh, upgraded to uh, Binance, and then I found myself getting involved in staking and, you know, having an NFT minted, which I'll get into my actual NFT I have up on uh, Rarible uh, before I dig that deep into it. But um, basically, um, just not just, you know, for my own self, but I thought about others as well. I'm not a selfish person when it comes to, you know, valuable information. So, you know, I got involved with one particular imprint I was working with called um, Crypto Talk LLC. Um, you know, learned some lessons from that particular venture. Then I found mm -hmm. myself working with a group out of Tennessee mm -hmm. called a Resourceful Business Group. Um, you know, that, that group, I kind of took some time to help develop and educate those folks. Um, raised a few thousand in, in crypto, you know, just between that, that particular investment group to show them it can be done but it takes consistency, repetition, and keeping your eyes on market market events and, you know, market activity to, you know, build your wealth. What people have to realize about, you know, crypto is that you can't get rich overnight. That's just not how think things work. You, people think you can put 25 bucks in and make 25 million. It'll never happen in your lifetime and it'll never happen with the way the market is going or how it went in the past or in the future. Mm -hmm. You have to build with what you have and then recycle the earnings and keep compounding you know until you until you get something out of it okay. but you know like i tell anybody investing you only got to put in what you're going to lose so if you're going to put in five cents you might make back 25 cents put in a thousand dollars you might make back more but you know again it's all about research and making the best choices for yourself financially because anything i say is just from the aspect of education not at all financial advice but the fact that advocacy sharing information that is public record with everyone who can benefit from it and be an example from that. Mm -hmm. I literally just came from the store right now and bought myself a cheese stick with my BitPay card. Mm -hmm. I cashed, I, I paid for my meal, my dinner with crypto. So if y'all want receipts, I got it, you know? Okay. I'm just showing you how a lifestyle can be lived with this particular thing. And now just kind of fast forwarding to the space where I'm at now, where I'm kind of being my own person and just, you know, being a personality, being an advocate, being someone who, you know, with this burgeoning, uh uprising of you know uh people of color african americans you know whatever identity people want to follow behind or even melanated folks who want to get into crypto subtitles Oh, go ahead i'm sorry about that are you good yeah yeah but um you know just just to get involved and um you know share the good information about what's going on I, I wanted to kind of just, you know, put it out there and share the information, you know, start to put out info sessions, being visible, creating charts, graphs, sharing the news that people are not even aware is taking place. There's a separate publication world that's not a part of the mainstream world when it comes to cryptocurrency, like Cointelegraph.com, uh, you know, Coindesk. Oh, one second, one second. Everybody, please mute your phone, please mute your phone. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All good. Yeah. It's about to say y'all want to hear all this information. So if you want me to walk through it, feedback is just going to be a uh, going to be a no. You know, let y'all know now because we want I want y'all to hear everything I got to say. Because okay. this is just my life experiences. But um, you know, back back into the path of thought and everything. Um, it's it's just now time for people to be involved, man. From my own earnings, wins, losses, lessons, and victories, I've gotten into this journey and still continuing to move forward. 
Um, you know, I just want to make sure to share this information, with everybody, because I am proof of how, you know, cryptocurrency can be beneficial to myself to change dynamics for myself financially. And now that um, I'm looking to move on to bigger, better things globally, um, I, I do want to let everybody know that I, I took the time to pay for a plane ticket to Ghana, all paid for with my earnings from Shiba Inu. If you want the receipts, I got it. So, you know, this is just to let y'all know that, you know, 1400 bucks money, cash money was paid for with cryptocurrency. And now I'm able to do as I please and, you know, I mean, go around the world and speak to others and share my success stories and things I've been involved with cryptocurrency. I want y'all to have that same energy. It's time for us to be freed from what the American dollar has done to us in this pandemic. So, you know, this is just where the story starts for me and where it begins for everybody else. Awesome. 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 I'm, I'm so excited. I love that information. Me being an early adopter of Bitcoin and being an early, very early adopter, you know, launching the Blexit. You know, you've you seen me. You was a part of the mm -hmm. Blexit. We was a part of the Blexit movement. The Blexit was the yeah. Black Economic Exit Strategy. I was trying early off to get everyone involved in this cryptocurrency world and everything mm -hmm. else. But with that being said, like all of these buzzwords flying around, we still got some of the family on the chat that don't really know. So if you can give us like a brief overview of like where mm -hmm. the NFTs fit into this whole like spectrum of like stuff that's going on. Like everybody's just buzzword, NFT, cryptocurrency, <laughs> you know, right there, like how, right, right. how, yeah, well, like, can you give us like a brief overview of what, where, where does NFT fit into this whole spectrum of things? Right. So <laughs> NFTs basically, again, we have to look at the world we live in, in at, with, with the whole crypto space as a separation of worlds. We're now in a place where things are separating and people who have access to these things can now get into what is the now the, uh, the, the, the store of things. NFTs basically act like items, mm -hmm. things you could buy in a store, but not just limited to you know, digital artwork, but it's now expanded to real estate. Hmm. It's now expanded to music. Okay. Now divorcing the artists that were enslaved to these record deals and having to deal with compromising situations in order to get involved with wealth can now be, you know, detached from these folks, monetize everything they do musically, and then not on top of that offer incentives to artists to, you know, um, I mean, fans to make money from from the sales from their particular items, but also recoup, you know what I mean, uh, royalties that never stop. Okay. And the money goes directly to your bank. You are the bank with the NFTs. So, you know, with crypto making the person, the bank, NFTs now makes you the marketplace. And mm -hmm. if you have NFTs, you are now not only a bank, but now a marketplace. You now have a two-way stream of income that you know, comes directly to you because crypto being the medium of payment, NFTs being the marketplace of things, um, you know, this will be the future of things are sold. Um, I can even reference a uh, interview I've watched on Yahoo Finance. Uh, forgot forgot the gentleman's name. Um, I believe he's a founder of Galaxy Holdings or something like that. He basically had a brief reference about how he's now considering to use NFTs to validate the authenticity of, of, of his watches. He has a watch collection. Of course, if you're rich, you can afford those things. Mm -hmm. You know, having an example of how a real use case basis on how real life items can be authenticated and validated through NFTs. This is where now things change for our generation to now have proof of things that we own this pre this prevents you know the fake watch busters prevents people scamming and duplicating and doing you know um terrible things with items i made an you nft know, of my big thing. huge cock and your mom bought it yeah you can go ahead and uh um, kick him out the group because he's 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 in the way he's already you already know go ahead okay well hammer it, hammer it. Hammer the nfts Dude, we're just trying to have a meeting. Can you please shut the fuck up? You shut it's the rude. fuck up, Chris Dillon, you little fucking loser. Shut up, you small cocked fucking <laughs> loser. Oh, man, I'm here for it all. I was actually just talking about my huge cock, so. Okay, buddy. You know you're getting, you know you're getting up out of here. You know if I catch you, you know what time it is, right? Okay, so anyway. <laughs> what time is it? 
Hold on one second. I'm trying to get him up out of here. Mm-mm-mm. You muted, bro. David. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, buddy, let's go. Okay, we're good. We're flowing through. So um, basically with NFTs now kind of being the marketplace for crypto holders, this is now a spe- special place where we can, you know, have our money to, you know, grow even more by having a place where we can exchange things through our monetary system. So this is just the beginning of things where NFTs are going and NFTs having importance, um, you know, it has to be highlighted since it's now becoming the future of things being that crypto is now the future of money. So that's how that's how important it is. That's what it is. And that's how it's game changing for, you know, what it's what it's becoming. So so for somebody that's just getting started, can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, cool. So for someone that's just getting started, let's go for like, what is the NFT? What does it stand for? Like, let's, start, yeah, let's, let's, let's give them some base because it's family on here from their event. Some of us are not. Let's let's mm-hmm. start there and then we'll chime our way down. You know, gotcha. we're, we're in it, we're in a strange time right now. You know, absolutely the US dollar is collapsing. It's completely terrible collapsing. inflation. This is the 50th year of the fiat currency. You know, since Nixon put the world on the gold standard, we have been on a fiat currency basis. Right now, yep. uh cryptocurrency is a way for us to get freedom. So let's start from the jump. Like, what is an NFT? What does it stand for? Cool, I got you. And I'll make sure that, you know what I mean, everybody's listening. We're going to walk through this together. You know what I mean? So NFTs is an acronym. Mm-hmm. Letters that represents words or a phrase. Non-fungible token. These are unique crypto-based items that cannot be traded. Like, for example, on platforms like Coinbase or Binance, some of the common names you may hear in, you know, various crypto, you know, conversations. And mm-hmm. it's a unique item that is authenticated by a blockchain. Blockchain basically is a ledger system that allows you to move information back and forth in the crypto space, whether it be information, finances, or whatever the case is. So, you know, with that being said, NFTs are basically individual items that, you know, are stored, sold, or held. And with these non-fungible tokens are basically things that are, you know what I mean, digital assets. That's basically what, what an NFT is. The NFT could be anything. You know, it's not, again, like I, I said earlier, for those who may have just jumped in or, you know, may think it just be based upon art, which is not. An NFT could literally be a podcast. An NFT could be a um, a music video. An NFT could be a recipe. You have to keep in mind, NFTs are basically receipts of ownership. And that's literally what it is, but in the digital space, and you pay for it, keep it, or exchange it through cryptocurrency platforms. So that's basically what it is. NFT, you know, either could be, you know, the authentication of owning a cell phone or something like that, you know? So that that's basically, in, in, a, in a very simple sense, what it is. And of course, we ain't going to get too deep into it, but this is for people that's fresh into the information. The advanced people, you, you know what it is. Yes, yes. And I would like to piggyback on what you said as well. From from my understanding, it's a non-fungible token that you can also get royalties off of. Correct. Correct. You create these non-fungible tokens and you get you can create a royalty. So you can Mm -hmm. get a percentage off of it. I can get a percentage off of it. Right. And and we can sell and trade these things online as Mm -hmm. proof of proof of ledger, proof of you know what we're we're trading. For instance. Correct. Right, right, right. So how, how does it work? Let's go into that. How, how does NFTs work? Like, um, you know, what, what's the exchange medium? How do they work? You know, it's a great question. So, of course, if you want to purchase an NFT, you have to get an NFT at an NFT marketplace. Mm-hmm. The biggest one we've heard of, of course, with its own, you know, growth spurts and adjustments is OpenSea. Um, it's the biggest place, crypto marketplace in the world. Billions are going through the marketplace at a time. And it's, of course, as this being one of the biggest markets, it's at least seen billions in sales, um, you know, over, over the past few years. Another one, for example, the top marketplace is Rarible.com. Um, this is another marketplace where you can also, 
you know, sell and buy and also, you know, trade NFTs and different things like that. And these are the places where you can get these items from. Um, what I want to do, because I want to actually show people what, what it looks like, I wanted to go ahead and um, uh, share my screen so I can show y'all, show y'all what it is and actually show y'all my NFT, the actual uh, marketplace itself. Give me one second, because I want y'all to flow with me, okay? Give me one second. Okay. What was the website you said, the first website? Sure, I got you. The first website is OpenSea.io. You can view this on your mobile phone or a, or a computer. It's actually easier uh, navigation-wise to view it on a desktop. That way, you can see the whole you know platform and all the you know navigation buttons and tools and everything. While while he's talking, I'm also dropping a lot of links in the chat. I got everything in the chat. If you guys want to copy what's in the chat, these are different sites and modalities and different places you can go and just kind of get nosy and know where stuff is. Etherscan, blockchain.com, OpenSea.com. Exactly. Yeah, all, all of those different sites. So we with you, Black. Go ahead. Keep flowing. Right, you. And also just to highlight what you said about Etherscan, I thank you for saying that too. Etherscan is a website mm -hmm. where it shows a directory of ownership or who has what based upon their blockchain code. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as a blockchain address, it's basically a long string of letters and numbers, capital and lowercase, that's basically the social security number of the item you have, that's an NFT, mm -hmm. or the actual confirmation code, or you know the code of ownership. That's basically the address of who has it, when it was purchased, and the particular cryptocurrency was used to purchase that particular item, of course, under it being ether based either through Ethereum or any other the tokens under the Ethereum platform that use Ethereum's blockchain or ledger system to move information back and forth under that particular token. So it could be any of the ones out there, like the Centerland, you know, um, Tezos, I believe, uh, Tether, um, you know, different ones out there like that. So, you know, so ether scan and OpenSea are places where you track. That's how you find out who owns everything, who owns the projects. And that's how you get in on the early projects. So if you're looking to get in on a, like the early projects and see like who has the ownership, you can go to Etherscan or you can go to OpenSea.com and that mm -hmm. will tell you like, oh, they just started this project because you want to get in early. The early right now, this is all Thanks. new. So it's new money for all of us to get in and kind of like wiggle our way in. And you, you can't be afraid to fail. That's another thing like this. This is Good not. Enough. Yeah, this is it, it, it's not about failure. You don't want to go put your whole life insurance in the whole Bitcoin and nothing like that. You just yeah. have your, house. Yeah, have your money diversified. Um, we got a question in the chat. Somebody said, what is blockchain? And would you be able to go over that again? <laughs> sure, no problem. So um, I guess if you just got into the got into the chat, I'll be happy to break that down to you. Blockchain itself is a system that works like a ledger that shows proof of ownership from who bought what and who sold and who sent who sent it to where for example a blockchain basically works like this if i have wallet a and i want to send 50 tokens to wallet b blockchain is the is a system that allows that information or that currency transaction to take place so blockchain basically um not not, not to get too techy into it is a network system of those who validate the transaction, move it from one, one network or one node to another. And then once they confirm the transaction is valid, they now send it to the other person who's waiting on that transaction or the NFT to be sent to their wallet address. And they confirm it as a valid transaction. That's also transparent because it's public record. So that also shows proof of ownership and nobody hide, nobody's hiding nothing. You know what I mean? So it's basically kind of it kind of works like how Cash App works. You send your Cash App from one person to another, and by Cash App being the medium of exchange, that's the same way how blockchain works. It's a medium of exchange for information through crypto-related means. Well, absolutely correct, and that was very well said. It's a ledger. Blockchain is a ledger, just like a yep. ledger in a bank. What a ledger does inside of a bank, it records all the transactions and it, it lets people see where their money is going, where their money is being held. So blockchain acts as a ledger, just to piggyback on what you were saying. So right, right. with that being said, how does one create an NFT? How do we create an NFT? That we're all here, we want to make some money, we like mm -hmm. all focus. How do we 
Where, what sources do we go to? Who do we go to to start to make our NFTs? Perfect. I'm going to explain it in three steps with a few points in between. So step number one, you need to have a wallet. A wallet is where you keep your money, you keep a directory of all the NFTs you own or you, or you have. And the wallet is also the same way you access, excuse me, the websites to get into. Now, of course, some may have logins or whatnot, but the main way you access these particular NFT websites is through your wallet. You connect your wallet. The best way to access, honestly, would be through the desktop. So you have a login and a sign in for your wallet, which the main, the most popular ones are MetaMask. Now, with your wallets, it's important to have, you know, I mean, your password and um, I believe it's called your seed phrases. Your seed phrases is basically 12 backup phrases you have to put in order that allow you in the event you lose your device or your password or whatever the case is for any reason to get access back to your money. It's the same thing of having a password for your actual mobile app for your bank because you want to make sure you have access to your money. If you are the bank, you have to be responsible for access to your money. Same thing that takes place when you're talking about paper dollars, same thing takes place with the digital dollars. So that's important. And step two, when you have your wallet set up, you use your wallet to connect to the websites, which could be through a QR code or through whatever means of accessing the website, which would be through a marketplace. Step two is now the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, a marketplace is where you get, where you purchase and sell all things crypto. The marketplace again has a ocean of content creators that are selling things, whether it's 3D art, whether it's you know paintings that are digitally scanned, you know hand painted stuff. There's all types of um, you know mediums that are being used to you know sell to, to create NFTs. So you know that's pretty much um, where everything starts at. You sell there, you buy there. That's how it works. You can also view your NFTs through your uh, crypto wallet, which shows a listing of those items that you have in your possession. Mm -hmm. So that's how all that all that connects. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and of course, keep that in mind, because that's that's very important. Um, let's see what else what else what else let me think. Um, what, what was the what was the last part to the question? I know I was going through information. I didn't want to forget anything. Um, we were just saying how um how NFT, how do we start? You know, starting the NFT. Yeah. What sites do we go to? Just if you have okay. a couple of sites where we can go to, like what, what how do you make it? Like what do you what do you do? Where that's, do we go? Where yeah. Now how to make it. Now, of course, that 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 that's an open-ended question, but let me kind of centralize it. Okay. So you 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 by default, any person that's watching this, if you have a creative background, you already ahead of a lot of those who may be interested in doing art because you can either do, or you can either submit your uh, work in the form of graphic design, photo work, 3D art, or any, any type of renderings that you wanna do, and you can upload it to the website. And then once you have it hosted at that point, you set the price, you set your royalty percentage, which is the money you recoup through sales. And then, you know, from that point, if you want to offer the option, for example, if you have a physical piece of art, that is a digital version, you know, through the NFT space, you can offer to the purchaser to get the physical items so that but they have the physical item that's associated with the digital version. And you can do that that way. Or for example, if it's music based, um, you can have a special link for that particular person, or, you know, or purchasers, if you have a series of items, let's say, for example, Tory Lanez, he had a project where he put out a million uh, songs or a million, you know, I mean, tokens to purchase a particular song or, you know, project he has out and he had just enough for those who wanted to purchase it. Those people have and buy those things. And then from that point, you know, that's where it's at. But creative wise, um, you know, if you, if you want to just get started with doodling, there's apps out there called Procreate where you can, you know, get on your phone or get on a tablet, start doodling, start looking at different effects. Um, if you want to even go on Photoshop, you know, if you want to start messing around with different effects, that's also fine as well. Now, as a footnote, for those who want to get into creative spaces, YouTube University is your friend. If you don't know something, by all means, there's someone out there explaining these instructions step by step with visual examples to show you how to do certain things. So if it's something that you want to get into, even if it's like, you know, I've seen parents 
uh, upload uh, NFTs of their children's doodles and stuff like that from in, being in third and second grade and all that, you can, you can do those things, you know what I mean? So I'll even say, for example, for me, I have, you know, some uh, artwork that I've done in high school and, you know, my younger years on Microsoft Paint that I, I think is pretty dope. I'm re-releasing those items. So, you know, I mean, any aspect of creativity that can be, you know, minted, which would be the slang term for creating an NFT, then you by all means can do that. Okay, I think a question just came up from um, Courtney, I got you. So if you want to make your, your next CD an NFT, I got a platform for that too. So I'm um, actually two of them. So we got Audius. Audius actually has a crypto token that you can purchase on Coinbase. You can go to their website and upload your music as an NFT content to sell to your fans. And then of course recoup royalties from those sales. And it's spelled A-U-D. I U S. Let me go ahead and probably drop that in the chat now, so that way um, you got the spelling. So that's that's gonna make you some money. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, no problem, bro. It's, it's all about the money. Just trying to share the wealth. You hear me? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here. That so part of our movement and what we're somebody got to mute their phone. <laughs> Okay, anyway, mm -hmm. so um, let's talk a little, since we're on the topic of money, let's talk a little bit about decentralized finance. Like how yeah. do we make money with NFTs? Um, where does one, how does even decentralized finance work? You know, a lot of people, they have it in their mind that we buy and hold Bitcoin. We buy mm -hmm. and hold cryptocurrency, but there's, right, so right, much, right. there's so much other stuff that's not being covered. And right, I feel right, like, right. yeah, I feel like you would be the best person to let, let us know. Like, how do you get the money? You know, I, I've seen the U.S. dollar coin. People don't even know the U.S. dollar has a coin. Yeah, the U.S. dollar digital. Y'all don't even know it. That, that's going to yeah. be how y'all exchange stuff in the next couple of years from now. Yeah. I even said before I even get into this plan and that, that basically what they're doing right now, they're going to let inflation go crazy. They're going to make sure y'all suffer. And then they're going to come in with something called I guess it's certain, you know, uh, levels of scholarship called the Hegelian dialect, where they create problems, make you suffer, and come into a solution with the savior complex. And now people are slowly introduced into the usage of new things, but using fear and propaganda and uncertainty and doubt to get you involved in these things. You know what I mean? And we're trying to release people with education on how these things really work. That way you're not attached to cryptocurrency out of the basis of fear and missing out on opportunities but showing how you can disconnect from a system that's oppressing you with control and allowing you to take control right so that that's really what it is and anything that is decentralized is not connected to any central banks which are the same people that are creating these uh country-based cryptocurrency tokens that way their national countrymen or country peoples are using these tokens. I'll say um, there's actually 84 countries in the world that are creating their own tokens. You know, from the United States, Brazil, Canada, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Germany, El, Russia El, is now El, looking into some legislation. El Salvador just El Salvador made, is crypto city. <laughs> El, El, El Salvador just made Bitcoin a, a real actual currency. Actual so, currency. Yeah, so and we're then, not. And they up too. Yeah, so when we speak about Bitcoin and these currencies, we're not talking about some conspiracy theory type of thing. We're talking nope. about actual changes that are taking place in our world today. The U.S. dollar, like I said, it's over. You know, most fiat currencies only last thirty to twenty years. You know what I mean? They don't. It, it doesn't really last long. The U.S. dollar has been around for fifty years, and it's dying. You understand it, it's really going down. So we have to, and what we teach at Wolf and Fly is to have your stable of dragons. You know what I mean? You have half money, half cryptocurrency, half gold and silver. You understand? Right. And that's how you stay afloat in this new world. And that's the purpose for this conversation that we're having right now, because we want everybody to think about diversifying their assets. You know, some people go crazy. They're like, Bitcoin. I know people who spit. So their mortgages, <laughs> they mortgage their house and bought Bitcoin. They lost their house. They go crazy when they hear this information. Yeah. We're, not, we're not encouraging you to do any of that. We're just saying um, 10% in cryptocurrency. 
you know, 10% of your money on gold and silver. And then we're going to ride the cash horse until it's no more. What you should do with your cash is uh, put it into mutual funds, self-paying mutual funds that give you a dividend. That's where your money, yeah, that's where your money should be at. Mutual funds that pay you out for just life insurance policies, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And and that's where your your US dollars should be, a little bit of cryptocurrency and a little bit of gold and silver, you know? And that's exactly. that's what we're pushing. So exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, so we talked a little bit about decentralized finance. Where do you see the future going uh, with cryptocurrency? Like, where, where you know? <laughs> oh man, that's that, that's a that's a great question. So let me go ahead and you know what I mean, just walk everybody through this one because you're gonna let us. So basically, what's gonna take place, um, just from where I'm seeing things, with people who are out here now flooding the world with advocacy, allowing people to be their own bank. I believe cryptocurrency will allow a, 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 a freedom that's deserving of our generation, being that the current legacy system and the legacy financial powers to be are literally just burying us alive in debt. This is, a, this, is, this is the key to the door. This is the key code you punch in to get access to the new 1%. Those who are early investors now will be a part of that new 1% in the next decade, I promise you. All the doubters, I want you to keep that same energy because now we have, well, how we have kids making tens of thousands of dollars, buying their parents cars, putting down deposits on houses just by playing video games through the NFT spaces, like through Axie Infinity, through Decentraland, through uh, Sandbox, and you know all these other dope applications out there that are actually very lucrative to play. Adults can play too. This is now new income streams that the banks are afraid of that they're yeah they're afraid of can't stop and there's nothing they can do about it those who are early investors in, in into these assets you know those would be the, the new ones that will you know appreciate the time taken into it you know this will be a new future for those involved into it you know that will be able to experience the freedom of wealth and have the gift of time we they they, they structured our lives to be able to work for 20 30 40 50 years and then only have about five or 10 years left to enjoy the wealth when your body is broken down you don't have the ability to move around and do things you would like to do just by cutting out the middleman and making you the middleman you now have the opportunity to experience what, what we're all deserving of and just by being invested into those things and being ahead of that you'll now be able to catch the wave of money that the early investors from 2010 to now are enjoying you know people that are in their 20s and 30s that are millionaires and billionaires. All the crypto millionaires just moved to Puerto Rico. I'm not sure if y'all knew this, mm -hmm. but um, young, there's a- Young, young millionaire, young millionaire, young. Young millionaires, yeah, 20, so 21, yeah, 22, 23. 20, 20, they ain't got no graves in their beard yet. Yeah, 22 <laughs> years old with $40 million. Could you imagine? Yeah. Exactly, like 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 the owner of the co-founder of, of, of the XTX trading platform, He's 29, he's worth about 44 billion. What? Okay. Well, because he was smart enough to get involved into crypto and not worry about what the news and naysayers were saying. And he just changed, he just turned generational wealth into that that fast. You can't, you can't, you can't deny it to a point. You can't, you can't be in denial. And I say that in the information age, ignorance is a choice. This is now separating people. Okay, wow, we're literally in the, in the, in the age of the matrix. Either you're gonna pick the blue pill and be like everybody else and just work until you die and then have to pay 30% taxes on your retirement or be the investors that are willing to take financial risks in order to have financial glory and then you got the glory. Okay. So, you know, those who are, are, are part of this process and are part of this financial revolution, which is called the fourth industrial revolution, you know, the age of, you know, digital assets and, auto, and automation and things like that. Those little people who will be, be the part of the future of those who will have a say, who will sit in board meetings, who will be able to, you know, own assets and own businesses and corporations and, you know, have a say in certain things because you have invested. And with only about 8% of the people in the world involved in the cryptocurrency, sitting in this room now, being that the market crashed a few weeks ago and now would be a good time to buy a cryptocurrency, by the end of this year, you might see a bag. If you at least put a few bucks in, that might be you. 
If that's, not, that's, that's personal. A, that's another thing. People get afraid when they see the Bitcoin going up and down. They're seeing the money crash and fall. But mm -hmm. let them know that, you know, it's a risk in everything. The U.S. dollar is a risk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And let me say something about risk, too. What people have to stop being afraid of when it comes to risk is that when we look at investment, it just comes from the basis of just not knowing how investment works, which is okay. But now that we live in the age of information, you can attend a workshop. You can go on YouTube, which is free. You can, you can, you can, you know, I mean, pay somebody to, you know, be to manage your investments. There are people out there who spend every day of their lives advocating, teaching, and offering services to allow people to, you know, over time build their wealth. And that that's exactly what it's just going, going to be. But you know, the same investments that we don't realize that we lose that we think you're gonna lose by getting into the financial space. We take that same investment risk when we go to the slot machines and try to think you're going to hit big just by pulling them penny slots and you don't spent up all your gas money. The same investment when you go spend some spend some big money at some store buying some uh, Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Somebody splash some mud on it or somebody snatch, snatch your stuff. There go your four thousand dollar bag, you know, or out here just, you know what I mean, doing risky things financially just for the sake of vanity and spending money because you have it. Those are the same risks people take every day, but don't think about it because there's different categories for risk on a general consumer level versus a financial level that, you know, a lot of people aren't willing to cross that bridge either out of fear, skepticism, or just, you know, being completely ignorant to what's going on, which is okay to a point but you know now with information being present in front of our eyes decisions are now you know able to be made and then of course consequences good and bad can take place so you know the future is, is yours but you have to pick a side at this point because the wealth gap is spreading very fast and at a very very fast velocity you know what i mean well, but, like well, besides, so so besides cryptocurrency you know mm -hmm. besides cryptocurrency we're in a, a different age. There's three different things going on right now. So right. we're in the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. We're in the fourth industrial, undoubtedly, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. We're going into the internet of things. We're going into right. self-driving cars. We're going into yeah. home delivery. We're going yep. into artificial intelligence. We're going into mm -hmm. robot science thinking. <laughs> we're going into Elon Musk brainwave technology. Like things. Are Absolutely. The, uh, the second thing we're going into is we're in the Great Reset. They're resetting the world because the fiat currency mm -hmm. is dying. You know what Absolutely. I mean? So what, what are some other things that we can invest in that can get us money and bring us some change? What are, like, what, what are some things you can suggest besides cryptocurrency? Let's say somebody is on here, they're like, nah, what mm -hmm. else can I invest in? What are some things that you think outside of that that we can focus our money on to get the bag? You good? Perfect question. I'll be happy to answer. So within our generation, the generation of people who live in the world within the next 30 years will be passing on to the children, you know, behind us for those who are, you know, getting into parenthood. We have to look at the common sense type of commodities and stocks that will make the world better. We're currently dealing with global warming. We invest in green stocks. We invest in solar energy. We invest in natural, you know, ways of producing. We invest in people who are invested into holistic solutions and have companies surrounded around those particular uh, solutions that will get the bag. You know what I mean? People who are invested into organic food, people who are invested into cleaning the air. You know what I mean? Even living, getting into technology. I will say that we are in an amazing time with the technology aspect because we now have, you know, technology in a way doing things or automating things that you know are, are above human capacity. However, it does not stop you from financially benefiting from that because we now have people like Elon Musk who have created Neuralink also behind you know, the Tesla, you know, uh, Tesla vehicle lines because they're not only just having you know, consumer cars, but they'll also have self-driving trucks that move commerce back and forth all up and down the various roads that are built for us now. You know, also people who are into construction, green forms of, of construction, anything that is plant-based 
anything that is you know holistic to the earth but good for commerce we should be investing in those things because what's going to be left for us once the gas is gas is gone from these gas reserves when the oil reserves dry up mm -hmm. the sun is still there plants are still growing produce and waste is still being done we need treatment plants that are producing you know what i mean effective means of powering the world by recycling what is what is not used and repurposing it into something else so different stocks out there that are you know that are solving these problems that are creating financial solutions for us to be invested into we should look into these things because we have we have to be more concerned about the health the health of our future you know what i mean the status of the world and what's taking place you know nature in itself we need trees to grow we don't need to keep tearing up and burning up stuff all the time it's ridiculous so we have to be considerate of these companies that are involved and have you know funding and investing into these particular uh, aspects and then capitalize on it I was, that we have we have to invest in common sense solutions because all of this you know frivolous stuff is just it's just not enough even new age entertainment you know we have to look at what entertainment is coming into web3 the new version of the internet back in the day for those who you know of, of a certain age we remember those America Online CDs where we had to switch them joints up to keep having access to America Online. Then we got Google, and then Google got better, and then Google created its own browser. And then so many other browsers later, we have different ways of viewing the internet. Now that the internet is now going to be blockchain based, and we have you know quantum computers that are computing things at speeds we have even no idea to even measure at this point. Even measurements, I'm not even too sure if to even explain to y'all. Just because I don't want to give you incorrect information, things are moving fast and combining, you know what I mean, like like uh, super powerful computers with the ability to blockchain to be like a type of fiber optic system to move vast amounts of information very quickly. You know, the TV that really predicts all the reality that we're being installed into right now, where we're going to have cars that can actually fly, which do exist when we can have underwater living pavilions that are being constructed, when we can have, you know, um, aviation based residential complexes that can float in the air just to kind of, you know, create new ways of living, even with outer space exploration. The fact that we are looking at a time where we could consider seeing humans in different planets and different reservations out there within the next five to 10 years could be a thing. And those who are spearheading those those particular, you know, ambitions and adventures, we right. should get involved in it because that bag is going to blow up faster than anything else that's going on right now. Even with the legacy system, they're all digitizing everything they're doing because digital is the future. I would like to that's add. Cool. I would. I would like to add to that list of things mm -hmm. that should be focused on, future focused on. So, everybody has an iPhone. What are the components inside the iPhone? You understand? Exactly. So one thing I would like to add, and I want all of us to take this away, is rare earth metals. I want us mm -hmm. to look up how to invest in rare earth metals. What are the metals yep. that go inside the cell phone, the tantalum? You know what I yeah, mean? The, the, the bulk side. You know, all of these different rare earth metals that are being mm -hmm. mined in Nicaragua and um, Argentina, all over the world, China holds the biggest earth metal reserve. They're, they're, they're mining all over the world and taking all Big the earth metals and selling it to these computer companies and they're making this stuff. And this is how it's working. We need to invest in the rare earth metals. Another one I would like to say is psilocybin, mushroom. Mushroom, mushrooms just became legal. Psychedelic health. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm telling you all, holistic mushroom. medicine is now going to be the op for the pharmaceutical industry. And I'm telling you all now, Again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a medical specialist because I definitely wanted to break break that, that conversation open. We have to return to earth. We have to return to nature. There is a war taking place. Again, for those who have different belief systems, I'm explaining this on a general level. The law of nature is being opposed by the law of man. And because there are certain entities and powers to be that would rather keep you into the loop of making the pharmaceutical industry money when plant-based solutions can actually cure a lot of sicknesses and diseases. Some may think I'm reaching, but even as far as cancer and certain STDs, there are plant-based regimens you can use to systematically remove mucus and toxins from the body to reset your body and have you at optimal health. 
even with mental health in the pandemic i know it's so many people who've been to depression and unfortunate events of suicide and people just really just breaking down because of the stress and the pressure of what the world has become getting into holistic medicines that can open up the mind's eye and to allow you to be in a space of clarity and peace that's really what's going to take care of you and that's really what's going to heal you somebody mentioned dr sabi thank you for bringing up bringing up a great man Absolutely, who's done well to teach people about these things because the fact that his information exists the fact that he has he has proof that's public record that he healed people in the new york court just with holistic medicines imagine how we could have the uprising of companies that have land that have facilities that have employees and distribution systems dedicated to you know the healing of the people and if these places have stocks that you can buy into that can make perfect sense that solve problems then you're not only doing right by yourself but doing right by others because you're invested in something that's helping other people one we more. have to get one back more. to nature one more so mushrooms rare mm -hmm. earth metals lumber 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 invest yeah. in lumber please like lumber is so mm -hmm. important right now the price of lumber is so high. It takes longer for lumber investments, maybe like 10 years, because it takes time for trees to grow. But if you're invested in and you figure like right now you invest in a lumber company, the trees grow, you capitalize, you can become a millionaire right now. You know what I mean? So that's awesome. Pepate la puta que te parió, porque los verdes de la jungla se vienen a todo gente. Anyway, keep it going. See the haters? That's what happens in the matrix. You see how they come? Yeah, you got, you, got, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got to do a virus scan every now and then. We got these little viruses and bugs and boogies they, they flying come everywhere. At, they come at you every <laughs> place. Yeah, 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 man. Some lumber. Right. Anyway, it, it, lumber is a stock. Philocybin mushrooms. What I was saying, Colorado just made mushrooms legal. Mushrooms, they treat, they've been treating yeah. soldiers for PTSD. When soldiers mm -hmm. come back from war, they're severely damaged. People have been giving them mushrooms and they have been kicking their mind back on same thing with crackheads and junkies i, I watched the research project out of detroit people mm -hmm. that was severely addicted to crack they gave them a seven gram dose of mushrooms and they got off of crack cocaine in a day okay Healing. okay Healing. so we're we talking about god that ain't no magic that ain't no bitcoin that's no cryptocurrency that's god magic you know psilocybin mm -hmm. is a very strong thing you can look up micro dosing Silicon Valley, all of the guys we think are so cool, Bill Gates and these guys, they're all microdosing mushrooms. Okay? Not, pro not promoting drugs or anything, but I'm just saying, go look up microdosing. There's so many doc documentaries. Dr. Sebi was mentioned in the Vice. Vice, Vice is a great place for people to see these things. I mean, you got to keep in mind that oh. the, now, now Vice is very great because it's an independent journalist platform that's showing the world kinda, as kinda, it is kinda, and it's not okay. scripted. <laughs> And it's not diluted by mainstream media. So yeah. I'm telling you people, so much good information out there that you can get involved in to see for yourself what's going on just by plugging in and tapping into what is the case and seeing what it is and seeing the data, seeing the proof, hearing people's stories, not just somebody explaining it to you, but seeing people who've benefited from the usage of these things. Again, just like just like brother said, not to explain, you know, not, not to promote drug usage, but to understand how anything that's plant-based has a holistic benefit and actually solves the problem, not keep it in a suspended state of animation where it's no, moving no more further. You know what I mean? So this is definitely some food for thought. I want everybody that's that's listening to the, you know what I mean? Just 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 take note of and just empower yourself. Even you know, the next time even, a chat like this takes place, share it with somebody else that way they can get up on this game, you know? Even the haters, even the haters. Exactly, so you, even the haters, even the clowns that came in earlier saying all this cornball stuff, they're gonna be left behind while you in a different address harder to get to. So what, what, you know what, are, you currently, what are you currently studying? Just so we, we about to wrap it up, but what, what mm -hmm. are you currently studying right now? Let the, the audience, let our family know, like what you studying, What's, what got you? Who's your people you're looking to and stuff like that? Okay, great, great, man. Um, I've actually been just looking into some things regarding men's wellness. Um, I am a part of a men's wellness group that's working on allowing people to find men to find the best version of themselves because being that we're forced and condensed into an ego based state of self, where we have to prove we have the most money, prove this, that and the third and live by unrealistic standards that are not healthy. 
I'm now showing a place where men can be vulnerable, but still be structured enough to be themselves and not have to compromise anything to this world's vile standards that has now become accustomed to now. Um, I've kind of just gotten into, you know what I mean, just reading up on men's health, um, you know, as far as like spiritual studies, gotten back into gematria. I've kind of learned how numerology works and how people who are in certain places are using certain codes and things like that to kind of curate how the world is working for us. Of course, you know, we got people working behind the scenes to present something. They're showing us what they want us to see, but what they know is taking place is being curated to a point. So, you know, I've just been kind of just studying how the world works on different levels. So that way, you know, what I mean, I'm aware of what's going on. I'm aware of what's next and I'm aware of how I can navigate the future as it's being developed in front of our eyes because it's not structured. It's being developed brick by brick. So, you know, that's where I'm at with everything, man. Just um, getting into that, getting into um, cultural spirituality, you know, even with this upcoming trip to Ghana, um, you know, just kind of just looking at different things. I, I, I want to see i want to open the door for myself i don't want to hear what nobody said from from this stat and the third i want to see these things for myself so you know i mean just getting back into a, a balanced sense of self being involved in sensible information and stuff like that this is just kind of where i've been at with things man so you know as i learn i teach you know awesome. that's where i'm at with it awesome awesome man i feel like we got to do a part two i, I feel like um yeah, yeah. it's that we time had to, we had to con condense it down you know what i mean because of zoom because of timing because of haters but mm -hmm. i think we need to do a part two but just drop your links let everybody know where they can reach you where they can find you who you are again just do a brief one over for the family please got you so what i'm about to do in the, in the thread on the chat right now y'all can go ahead and check out my instagram um check out my twitter I also dropped my link to my um, my NFT link. If anyone's interested, you want to support my uh, NFT journey. Um, the first one I have is just going to be one of many as I'm going through my hard drives and you know getting information out and also as I'm creating things. I'm just going to show utility. I'm also working on some NFT music projects. I still do. I still produce you know beats and instrumentals. I've been doing that for a while. I have over. 13 instrumental tapes to my credit and I may re NFT those as well with bonus information as well so I got a lot going on but I'll make sure y'all get all my links that way we can keep up together flow together and if anybody wants to we can make some money together I'm not selfish but I'm all about this business. Awesome, you know I mean? awesome, awesome, awesome. If, if, does anybody have any questions that's the next thing I'm going to unmute you. Um, who's next? You might have any questions I'm going to unmute everybody. Yeah, if you got questions while I'm dropping links, just hit me and I'll be happy to, you know, I mean, give you what give you my best. Any questions? I'm, I'm I just, I just want to say I don't got a question. I just want to say this Taz, we gonna link in, we gonna tap in. You hear me? Hey, bro, listen, listen. You you, you know, bro, listen. I'm telling you, the stuff I got now that I haven't even released, I'm dog walking everybody who ever has something to say. Right on. I'm telling you, it's it's, I'm with you. I'm with you, man. You send me the link. I'm here. That's it. I love knowledge. I'm ready to learn every day. That's what I'm on. Awesome. 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 So just to recap, like I said, guys, we want to have our stable full of dragons. We don't want to go invest all our money into Bitcoin. We don't want to put all our money into cryptocurrency. We want to have 10% in gold and silver. We want to have 10% in cryptocurrencies and the rest, the 80%, that's our money, the U.S. dollar. We want to have that in payable insurance policies that refund your money and pay you out a dividend. That's what we want to have our money. We don't want to just have our money in the banks no more. The bank is not something that you just leave your money in anymore because they're about to take everybody's 401k. They're about to take everyone's retirement. Yep. About literally overnight you're not gonna you want to go to the atm you're gonna be like what happened to my money gone you know yeah because the fiat currency is over and the fiat currency has dried up it's a dub and i tell everybody this too you know even uh shout out shout out to my brother josh you know what i mean because we got an opportunity to work for a fintech platform man blessed to be you know what i mean it's always 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 the good universe providing um i tell you what bro as soon as i get paid everything going straight straight into crypto I'm about to go and I'm gonna go buy some dividend stocks because what's not gonna take place is that I don't have access to my money when I need it. The good thing about the cryptocurrency market that is open 24 seven, you can withdraw whenever you want. Nobody telling you what to do with your money. You ain't gotta wait for no check to clear. If I need to send you 10,000, it's done. 
Just let me know when, when it when it when it hit when it, it pings your pings your wallet. You know what I mean? That's how that's how liquid money works. That's how real money works. If I can't act, if I can't move it when I want to, if I can't move a whole lot when I want to, that's not real money. I gotta wait for somebody else to do it. And when you cut out the central banks and you and I become a bank and you become a bank, we become an economy that has nothing to do with the people trying to control us because we control the we control the economy because that's what we are, the economy. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I want everybody to be that's in front of this information. And the next time we have a go around with this, we're going to get more deeper into more things with more topics and we're going to touch more money because that's what it's all about. Touching money and breaking these curses that are plaguing our plaguing, plaguing the world and plaguing our generation because they set us up to be broke. The IMF said on their website that you will own nothing to be happy. Do you know what that means? That means that they're going to have everybody stationed under universal income, which they're already tested in California. Now, they've already tested overseas in Europe that you're going to get stipend, basically welfare money. They're going to send you money every month. And if you don't spend it within three to six months, it's gone. It's not personal. It's just a part of the plan. And, and I want to trace, circumvent that. And, and they're going to trace and track every single everything. thing that you do. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that you do right now mm -hmm. you should be growing your own fruits and vegetables. You know what Correct. I mean? Into growing, learn about permaculture. You know, write mm -hmm. that down, start learning about permaculture, learning about how to build a food forest in your back. Yeah, food is expensive, you know, I'm telling you. Even if you don't have a, a lot of space, go on your patio, go in your window. Your apartment, you can do that too. Yeah, That's man. it. I'm telling you, they got like the vertical setups where you can grow herbs, basic produce. And I just came across an article today. Um, follow this other page of Akanandram. She's, she's noted for starting the first black virtual mall, which is ahead of the metaverse. Mm-hmm. And it's allowing people who have businesses under that directory to have a digital access place for consumers to get goods. So with the fact that now uh, composting is now harder to get to for certain companies that are out producing food, they're now resorting to using human waste in order to keep up with the food shortage and supply. So what y'all need to do now is to humble yourself, get ahead of the game, buy you some fruits and seeds, get you some disaster prep stuff. You know what I mean? All that's the conspiracy stuff I thought was a joke a couple of years ago. It's not. Go ahead and get you the stores of water, fil water filtration systems, different things that's going to take place. If they cut your water and you can't shower or, 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 or cook or drink, or if you can't have access to food, if you don't get yourself a deep freezer, even I, back up electric supplies, get you some generators. Like, also, you know. Also, this year I have became a farmer. I have 17 okay. acres. I have 17 acres based in Jersey right now. And we're mm -hmm. growing fresh fruits and vegetables. And if anybody would like to join, go to wokeandfly.com. We're accepting all volunteers. We're accepting everyone with a sound mind who ready to put some work in and grow some fruits and vegetables to change their future. Fruits and vegetables will change our future. You, you, we're going to need it. Go look at the food prices. Go to the supermarket. You think we lying. You know what I mean? Urban farmer, that's a job of the future. You know, mm -hmm. um, drone technician, that's a job of the future. We want to start getting our children acclimated to these different things so that they can be, yes. you know, past the, you know, curve, you know? Who? That's it. That's tech good. education, tech, tech job. Lady attorney in Baltimore. Okay. Um, what's the name? So yeah, man, that's where it's at, man. Technology, the future, get involved in this stuff, man. Everything we covered, I appreciate y'all, y'all patience and just allow me to get through the information, you know, brother helped me to, you know, get everything out here. This is, this is where it's at, man. So get involved, get yourself ready. The world is changing, be, be, but be ready to adjust and pivot because if you ain't going to pivot, you're going to drown respectfully. And I'd rather tell you to your face than waste your time. You hear me? Mute it. Okay. Peace, love, and light, everybody. Okay, we good, y'all. All right, thank y'all for your time, man. We'll, we'll see each other again very soon. You hear me? All right, peace, love, and light. All right, y'all.